Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the earned income credit, which is a personal credit. This topic is covered in income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. Always, I would like to remind my viewers, which is you, to connect with me on a professional as well as personal level. So please connect with me on LinkedIn if you have the LinkedIn account. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you do create a LinkedIn account because it's it's good for your professional image and to connect with other professionals in your industry, especially in the accounting and CPA industry. If you have a Facebook account, please like my Facebook page and feel free to connect with me on a personal level. You wanna make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So if you do subscribe, also like the recording, share them, put them in playlist if you know anyone anyone is interested. I do have a Twitter account as well as a website where you can get in touch with me and browse my lectures by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, on Jaeger CPA Review, you have hundreds of hours of video lectures, thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. So if you're a CPA student or if you are a college student, it's a great resource to study for the exam and or supplement your studies, especially on an undergraduate level. You'll have simulation, textbook, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus others. Use the promo code PMF, you will get 10% off of Jaeger CPA Review, the best valued course. You would benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So today we're going to be looking at the earned income credit. The first thing I want to let you know about the earned income credit, it's a refundable credit. Refundable credit, it's good. It means although you don't owe any money, the government will give you a check. Okay, we'll give you money if you qualify for the earned income credit. Now, a little bit of history about the earned income credit. Really, President Clinton is the president that expanded this credit. And the purpose for this credit was part of the welfare reform. Basically, what they said is you can be on the welfare for a certain period of time. However, if you are working, if you are earning money, then we are going to give you money. So if you if you work and earn money, the government will give you money up to a point. So this is the overall idea of the earned income credit. So the first thing about the earned income credit, you must have earned income because it's called earned income credit. What does that mean? It means you have to have a W-2, you have to have a Schedule C, you have to have some active income you are working, commissions, salaries, so on and so forth, either employee or self-employed. Now, real quick, just on a personal level, my experience with the EIC, when I was in practice, our CPA firm only catered for uh, well-off client. That doesn't have to be well-off client, but none of our clients uh, qualified for the EIC. So when I was in practice, I never ever completed an earned income credit. Now, when, when did I complete the earned income credit? I completed the earned income credit when I was doing taxes on the side, which is I no longer do. And when I was doing taxes on the side, many people that I uh, completed their taxes, qualified for the earned income credit. So when I did it the first time, it was shocked to me because I was not aware of it. I mean, I studied in college, but in practice, we just, we don't have earned income credit because the nature of our client, then when I did it on a personal level, I did. Uh, I did see earned income credit. Now, bear in mind, the earned income credit is subject to a lot of abuse, especially self-employed. What people would do is this. They, they may have a job and they may not make enough income to get the full credit. What they would do, they will create a Schedule C on the side. And this is what I start noticing on Schedule C. I start noticing that all the revenues and the expenses are rounded numbers. And I start noticing the profit from those from those Schedule Cs are just below below the maximum earned income credit. So the, the subject to a lot of uh, abuse, just FYI. So that's my experience with the earned, earned income credit. In 2018, the maximum earned income credit for a taxpayer, if you have one child, the maximum is 3,461, and this is how it's computed. We're gonna look a little bit more at the computation. If you have two qualifying children, the, the, the credit is 5,716. If you have three qualifying children, 6,431. Notice the more children you have, the more the more the government is willing to help you out. Okay, for 2018, now remember, those are 2018 numbers and 2019s, the numbers will change a little bit. They may go up a little bit, adjusted for inflation. We'll take the applicable percentage times the earned income, rate and maximum 
amount of earned income is determined by the number of qualifying children. The more qualifying children, the more you will get. Phase out begins when earned income exceeds 24,350 for married filing jointly with one qualifying child, 18,660 for other taxpayer. We're gonna look at the ranges on the next slide, so just ignore this for now. And you will determine the, the amount from the IRS tables. Also, we would look at the table just to give you an idea what it looks like. Now, we, we kept saying here you have to have children. Do you have to have children or one child? And the answer is no. It is available for taxpayers with no children. It's a small amount, but nevertheless, it's available. So you have to be between the age of 25 to 64, and you cannot be claimed as a dependent. So you have to be, in quote, independent, or no one can claim you as a dependent, and you have to be between the age 25 and 64. In, 20, in 2018, the credit amount for a married filing jointly with no qualifying children is approximately, if you do the computation, it's $520, okay? Um, the credit phase out begins um, when you exceed 14,170 and 8,490 for others. So notice if you have don't have a child, once you exceed 8,490, the credit will start to phase out and it will phase out We'll see on the next slide, it will go away like really quick at, you know, I believe close to 19,000. Also, you cannot ha have investment income in excess of 3,500. Now you might say, you know, that's not a lot. 3,500 is a lot of investment income, especially if you have money in the bank, because the interest rate for the past decade is very low. So if you do have investment income of 3,500, guess what? You don't need the government help. You have a lot of money at the bank or in investments. Let's take a look at the just the phase out and the ranges just to give you an idea how it works. This is a recap. Uh, we talked about uh, the maximum amount that you, uh, let's see, let's see, the maximum amount right here. The maximum EIC, two or, two or three or more, two children, one and none. Those are the maximum amount you would uh, receive. Uh, the rate for the percentage rate is 7.65, 34, 40%, and 45. So you'll take this amount times this amount, this amount times this amount, this amount times this amount. Then once you reach the phase out range, then for uh, no, no children, it will stay the same. Notice the rate will drop once you, once, you, once you reach the phase out range, because it means they're gonna start to reduce your income, uh, re reduce your credit. Simply put, your credit start high then once you reach the phase out rate, your credit amounts start to go down. So, so the more you make at the beginning, the more you get up to a point. Then once you reach that point, the more you make, the less you get, then you reach another point. So basically you will start with zero income. Up to, let me just kind of see if I can do this. Um, up to, let's assume uh, for earned income up to 10,000. Uh, now actually the phase out of earned income for married filing jointly is 24,000. So up to 24,350, you're gonna be getting the maximum amount. Once you, so the, the more you make between zero and 20, 24,350, the more you make. Then once you exceed this number, now the more you make, you're still gonna have a credit, but the credit will be reduced up till $46,010. Once you exceed this amount, then you, you would lose your credit. So it's interesting. So it will start high, then it start to go down, then it will phase out. Okay, so this is the phase out range. Um, this is for obviously for uh, joint filers. This is for all other filers, which is single head of a household, all the other filers. Okay, so just it gives you an idea um, how to compute this. Now in the real world, you don't have to compute it. Just you have to fill out the form. And in the real world, kind of let's go back and just kind of talk a little bit about the real world, just to make sure because it's subject to a lot of abuse. The way you, you know, how do you qualify a child? It's basically, it ha they have to be your dependent. So there's a lot of rules and a lot of specific rules because again, this earned income credit is subject to abuse according to Congress. I don't believe it's subject to abuse. That's, it's, the cost for the government is not a lot, but again, that's that's a different story. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so that's, that's how it works. Okay, but uh, you can go to the tables basically and uh, let's assume this is married filing jointly. And if your income between 9250 to 9300 and you have one, uh, let's look at married filing jointly, and you have one child, your credit is 3154. If you make between 9300 and 9350, your credit is 3171. And that's how you just basically, once you find out what's your the amount, 
from the worksheet, then you look up the how many, you know, your status, married, fine, and jointly, or other, and how many children you have, or if it's none, no children, and you look up the amount. Now let's take a look at this example. Now, again, I just want to make, I just want to make myself clear as much as possible. There are a lot of small rules about the EIC. I'm not going to go over all these small rules. I'm just going to give you an overall idea because in an income tax course, this is what just you want to get an idea what EIC is on the CPA exam. That's enough information. Okay. Uh, which of the following individual qualify for the, and uh, at least in my opinion, which of the following individual qualify for the earned income credit? Thomas is single, is single, is 21 years old and has no qualifying children. His income consists of 9,000 in wages. I'm sorry, you don't. You have, for, for If you have no qualifying children, you have to be between the age of 55 and 64. You're out. Shannon, who's 27 years old, maintain a household for a dependent child and is eligible for the head of a household tax rate. Her income consists of 16050 of salary and 50000 of taxable interest. All right. Uh, Shannon AGI is 16100 Okay. So first of all, uh, not uh, the taxable interest does not disqualify her. It's a small amount, $50. Let's look at her income. 16551 child. So let's see, see here. So we're looking at one child, and we're looking at for all other filers. The phase-out don't begin until... 18,660 notice. So she's going to be getting the maximum amount. She's going to be getting 3,461 because her her income is $16,010, which is below even the phase out. So she's going to get the maximum amount for the credit. She'll get the maximum amount. Okay, so Shannon does qualify and she'll get the maximum amount. Keith and Susan, both age 30, are married and file a joint return. Keith and Susan have no dependents, so no children, simply put. Their combined income consists of 28500 of salary, 100 of taxable income, taxable interest. Basically, that's not even a factor. Let's look with no child, 28000 No child, married, file, and jointly. The phase-out start at fourteen, and it will end at $20,000. they are in the 28000 ballpark they don't qualify for anything because their income is you know their AGI is 28,600 way above uh, with no child qualification Colin is 26 years old self-supporting single taxpayer he has no qualifying children and generate earnings of 9,000 so 26 years old the age is good uh, let's take a look at the earnings so we're looking at this table we're looking at this this column here and we're looking at all other filers and phase out start at 8490 so he's right here so he does qualify but not for the full amount um he's little you know he does qualify but not for the full amount okay because he's right here 9000 if he was below 8490 he would qualify for the full amount otherwise he will have to uh it will be reduced a little bit. Now, keep in mind, those numbers are subject to inflation. So from year to year, if you're looking at 2019, 2020, 2021, I don't know how long these lectures will be viewed for. Let's say 2022, okay? 2023, I hope those will be valid till 2023. Those numbers will change, but the concept will stay the same. Now, you might have, you know, slightly different qualification rules for, you know, what's a qualifying child, Make sure you read your textbook for that particular year. Um, if you have any questions about this uh, topic, please uh, email me. Um, if you happen to be studying for your CPA, study hard or for your college studies, if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating.